Hello everyone, I'm Eden and welcome to my playthrough of the Ace Attorney Apollo Justice Trilogy. I know this is something that's different for my channel, usually I'm a first party Nintendo kind of person, but fun fact, I actually love visual novel style games, especially these mystery detective type games. And I have played through the first Ace Attorney Trilogy as well as the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Um, they're not on my channel, I played them on my own, but if you are enjoying these games, I highly recommend you either play the others for yourself or maybe find some Let's Plays. I'm guessing there's going to be some characters in the Apollo Justice trilogy that come from the original games. Uh, so there might be some context there that if you haven't seen those games, maybe you won't know. But that's OK, because each case kind of has its own story, its own thing. Um, I really love the, the stories and the characters of these games, the drama, the comedy. So I really want to share that with my audience. So we are just going to hop into the first game of the trilogy, which is Ace Attorney, Apollo Justice. I'm going to start a new game. I know it says load game. I was going to start it and then I didn't. So it's, it's I, I haven't played these games. <laughs> new game. Usually the first trial is like the tutorial trial. So it's probably going to be on the shorter side, more of a basic trial, um, understanding the mechanics of the game. Episode one, Turnabout Trump. Okay, we got a, a painter. We got Bob Ross. And a card game? Painting and a card game. So it's like a fun Friday night. Showdown time. And I'm not I don't mean that sarcastically, that actually sounds like fun. <laughs> Like one of those, like, what is it called? The the wine and paint, sip and paint nights. You lose. Uh-oh. Ah! Uh, we got a sore loser. Or a sore winner? I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out how the story goes. Oh, that's ketchup. Strawberry jelly. We're family friendly here. <laughs> this is actually probably going to be more of a... What is this even rated? This is probably going to be more of a mature series on my channel. It's rated teen. <laughs> I seem to be in a bit of trouble. You just killed someone. Something like that. Dead. Someone hit him. Hard. Or is, are you just coming across the body? Me? Please. The cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that? April 20th, 9.37 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Panicked. Palm sweaty. All right, Eminem. I can admit it. I'm nervous. These weak arms are heavy. Okay, uh, ah, good morning. Ooh, oh, hello. G good morning, sir. This is Christoph. You look tense, Justice. Wound up tight. What? Wound up, sir? No. I'm loose. I'm fine. That screeching noise. Is that your voice? I suppose it's to be expected. Your first trial, and it's a homicide. I guess justice doesn't start small, eh? So I guess... Or just uh, Apollo Justice, and he's probably the novice defense attorney, kind of like Phoenix Wright was in the first game. I'm guessing Kristoff is our mentor. I I'm fine. I got up at 5 a.m. to do my Chords of Steel voice workout. I'm fine. Ah, <laughs> it's like Ross from Friends. I'm fine. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to pick up on my mic. That's screeching. I'm fine. I'm fine. Ah, that explains it. I did detect a certain rasping quality to your screech. <clears throat> I overdid it again. As you know, your client today is a good friend of mine. Ooh. I wouldn't want to let him down. If you get my drift. Well, I mean, if he did it, he did it. We just need justice. Drift gotten, sir. I I'm all over that drift. As it happens, I dined with him the night of the murder. So what's your alibi? We can't let this case fall through. Yes. Yes. I'm fine, sir. One more thing. Don't say you're fine quite so much. People might take you the wrong way. Gulp. I'll be preparing our case. You might want to introduce yourself to the client. Okay, perfect. I am not covering up the dialogue. Oh, I'm covering up the name. Maybe I should scooch. That's a little better. We'll, we'll go with this. So who's our client? Your friend? Your friend the murderer? My name is Apollo Justice. If it isn't clear already, I'm a new attorney. Now nah, I, I got you adrift. And today is my first trial. N not that I'm worried or anything. The defendant has been accused of... My boss wants to help him out, of course. And so do I. 
I mean, there's no way he did it. Not him. No way. Why? Who is it? He looks like a punk. Whoa! Good, uh, morning. Morning. It's all up to you today. First trial. Nervous. Meeting him? Cardiac arrest. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to say something. Uh, help? So, you're... Fine. I'm fine. Ah, uh, Mr. Fine, is it? Uh, I did remember you having an odd name. Well, we're off to a great start. Uh, are you sure you're okay? I mean, with me? Mr. Gabbett is a top-notch defense attorney. And he's your friend, so why... You'll see. Huh? You can do it. Be confident. Um, I... I'm really sorry this happened to you. I mean... I mean, I... It's time, shall we? Y yes, sir. He's pretty calm for someone who is accused of murder and may or may not have done it. Okay, I need to focus. First trial, here comes justice. April 20th, 10 o'clock a.m., district court, courtroom number two. The court is now in session. <laughs> Pain, so he's he's from the original. <laughs> uh, the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Uh, the defense is uh, fine. I mean, ready, Your Honor. Mind going blank. Don't panic. Ugh, too late. Your name was Mr. Justice? And this is your first trial? Y yes, Your Honor. But I'm fine. Really? Are you quite sure? Your voice sounds a bit strained. <laughs> Mr. Gavin? Yes, Your Honor. I was under the impression that you would be heading up this case. That was my intention, yes. However, a defense attorney must always cede to his client's wishes. My client specifically requested Mr. Justice. Why? I wouldn't want a novice attorney representing me in a murder trial. No, thank you. Well, of course he wants justice. But to entrust his case to this greenhorn? Why? I do not exaggerate when I say that you're the best defense attorney in town, Mr. Gavin. Okay, so Gavin's got trial experience. Fine. But does he have cords of steel? Then let's begin. The defendant may enter the courtroom. I feel like he should be a little more professionally dressed if he wants to be taken seriously. This is truly an unfortunate turn of events. I'm sorry we had to meet again under these circumstances. Long time no see. That's Phoenix Ra What? That's Phoenix? What happened to him? <laughs> What? I didn't even recognize him. I'm talking about how I've played all the games. I know all the characters. I don't even recognize Phoenix. Let's put the past behind us, shall we? He was the main attorney in the original or the first trilogy. What? These days, I'm merely Phoenix Wright. Piano play. What happened? What? <laughs> Mr. Wright, how could this have happened? I won't speak of it further then. If the prosecution would be so kind as to explain the charges, Mr. Payne? To think, I saw you enter this room a fresh attorney, and now I'll leave- I'll see you leave in chains. I mean, if we're friends, like, wouldn't you trust that I- I'm not a murderer? I don't think Phoenix Wright is a murderer. Ah, Winston Payne, subtle as ever, I see. Ahem. <clears throat> the crime occurred at the Borscht Bowl Club. Borscht? A oh, okay, a Russian restaurant. Okay, yeah, then I think I'm confident in him. He's saying that correctly, maybe? The defendant, Phoenix Wright, took the victim, a customer, and he hit him. Wham! On the head. Smack. Killed him cold. Hmm. A customer at the restaurant, you say? And the defendant? You say he was... the pianist for the club, it seems. Phoenix Wright. A pianist? This is the weapon that took the victim's life. A bottle of grape juice. Grape juice is apparently our defendant's drink of choice. Grape juice. I too enjoy a couple of glasses of grape juice on the weekends. The court accepts the deadly bottle as evidence. Deadly bottle added to the court record. Grape juice bottle used as the murder weapon bears the defendant, Mr. Wright's prints. Okay. Something to note, Justice. All evidence is filed in the court record. Make a practice of checking it frequently. The court record. Heard of that. Use R. Yep. That sounds familiar. I'm confident in your ability to handle this. Right, use R. Sounds like it's time for some hands-on action. There we go. So we have our attorney's badge. We have the autopsy report. The time of death was around 2 a.m. April 17th. Single blow to the forehead. Uh, we can get more details. Um, victim's name was Shoddy, Shady Smith. 
male, time of death, 1.45 a.m. to 2.15 a.m. Cause of death, cerebral hemorrhaging resulting from blunt trauma to the forehead. So fun fact, I work in the medical field and the forehead is actually one of the strongest bones of the skull. So I don't know, must have a weak forehead. Uh, the sub basement at the Borscht Bowl Club, so crime photo. Okay, he looks like a thug as well. Um, does anything look off in this picture? I see cars everywhere. I see the bottle, poker chips. Okay. And then the bottle. Sometimes you can, yeah, you can like rotate it and look, look around. Click on it. Grape juice. How long has it been since I drank grape juice? Grape juice. Apparently it's Mr. Wright's favorite drink. I wonder how well it goes with borscht. What is borscht? Let me know in the comments below. I don't know what that is. But I love food, so... I think... Have I checked everything? Uh, uh, here. The bottle is completely empty. Okay. It didn't shatter. I'm surprised. Uh, I, mean, I feel like if you hit somebody's head and we can tab through it... I feel like if you hit somebody hard enough to give them a brain hemorrhage, then... Uh, you can probably shatter the bottle. Okay, so we have people. Christoph Gavin is our boss. Phoenix Freight is a pianist. Formerly an ace defense attorney of some renown. I don't know what happened to him. Uh, Shadi Smith, victim. A traveler only recently back in country. And then Winston is our weak man prosecution attorney. Okay. So, the victim was a customer at this restaurant. But just who was this uh, Shadi Smith fellow? We believe he was a traveler, Your Honor. A traveler? According to his passport, he, has, he had been out of the country for a number of years. He had only returned to this country recently, though his place of residence is unclear. And he had some sort of connection with the defendant? That too is unclear at present, Your Honor. We believe they first met at the Borscht Bowl Club on the night of the crime. I feel like I'm, I'm in a crime movie, I'm like, Borscht. Borscht. If they had only just met, then why murder? Yeah, what's the, uh, what's the motive here. Perhaps the victim slighted the defendant's piano playing? That doesn't appear to have been the case. No, the motive had nothing to do with the defendant's lack of playing skill. At least not piano playing. I'll let this photo explain what I mean. Okay, so that was, we took a look at that earlier. As we can see, a game of poker was in progress at the scene of the crime. Wait a second. Isn't poker gambling? That's a crime in of itself. Ooh. We're not in Vegas. Indeed, it appears our defendant has fallen to become the basis sort of criminal. Poor Phoenix. Objection. Objection! It is true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. Yet it was only that. A game, in the purest sense. A competition, Your Honor. I mean, if you're not playing for money, is it illegal? A competition? Yes, a test of wits. A silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs wreathed in blue flame, know its final outcome. Uh, come again? The cards on the table had blue backs, Your Honor. I believe the defense was waxing poetic in an attempt to mystify those present. What? And impress women. That will be our first order of business here, then. To find out more about this fatal game of cards. Tell us, Phoenix. Very well, defendant. You'll testify to the court about the poker competition held the night of the crime. My pleasure. This is it. My first trial. Here goes nothing. Witness testimony. The competition. I'm a pianist by trade. Are you? <laughs> Yet I can hardly play at all. What? <laughs> My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. The room where we play and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. That's all it is. A game. And our customers are happy. Hmm. A pianist who can't play piano? Better than a defense attorney who can't defend. Very well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Right, Your Honor. My first cross-examination. Don't blow it. Are you right? You're sweating bullets. Bullets? Where? <laughs> it's a figure of speech justice. Your voice sounds strained and raspy, too. My brain feels strained and raspy, sir. You've watched me perform cross-examinations many times. Though you've never done one yourself, have you? Care for a refresher? Uh, I mean, I'll take the refresher for, you know, the purpose of the Let's Play, but I'm pretty aware of what they are, but I will do it so that the audience knows. Better safe than sorry, especially this early in the game. Yes, teach me. I know nothing. Indeed, your job, Justice, is to be mindful of the court record and the testimony. 
Look for inconsistencies in the testimony with what the court record tells you. When you found an inconsistency, that's when you present the conflicting evidence from the court record with R. But I didn't hear anything strange at all in the testimony just now. A good sign that you need to press the witness with L for more information. Press him? So what confuses me about these games, and this is a recurring issue, why do we have to press our own client? Shouldn't he have told us everything up front? Like, we should already know everything. I'm not a lawyer. I said I work in the medical, so I don't know. But like, shouldn't you go into it already knowing what your client is going to say? Don't let the fact that he's a remarkable man hold you back. Get more information. Uh, but is it Mr. Wright, my client? Well, think you can do it? Yes, thank you, sir. I think I can do it. I think you'd better, or we're going to have a problem. Just remember, find any inconsistencies, any lies in the testimony, and reveal them to the court. That is cross-examination. Learn it. Know it, do it. Inconsistencies, lies, Phoenix Wright? Yeah, what happened to him? As if, Phoenix Wright would never lie and it's up to me to prove it. Okay, we may begin the cross-examination. The competition. So usually I just press every statement. Uh, I'm a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. You can hardly play? Oh, I play sometimes when customers demand it. So I play them one song. That's usually all they want. Is that supposed to be a boast just now? <laughs> the title of pianist is a mask, a respectable face I wear for the world at large. Then why are you really at the Borscht Bowl Club? To get poker customers. My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker gateway. They pay you just to play poker? That would seem to be the case. I'm a professional after all. Ha, <laughs> do I detect pride in that statement? It's just hard for an honest, hard-working member of society like me to imagine. Yes, your imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. What? <laughs> I've played poker for seven years in that little room. And I've never lost once. What? You see why the customers come? Defeat the undefeated poker champion. It's quite a draw. That is, I'm quite, I'm, I'm quite a draw. Wait, you've never lost once? Not even one time? As I said, I'm a professional. He's played poker for seven years and not lost once. Is that even possible? The room where we play in the competition in there are the club's main attractions. The room in the crime scene photo is an attraction? It has quite a history, actually. The Borscht Bowl Club used to be a gathering spot for black market types back in the day. Black market? All in the past. Things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays. Suffice it to say that there were a lot of deals being made under the table. Right there in that room? A smoky room, gambling hoods, you know? Just looking at this picture makes me feel bad. The bosses gather around the table cutting deals, safe from the eyes of the law. Meanwhile, a goon keeps watch through the small window. Oh, I see, okay. I can practically picture it now. That window does look like it would be good for keeping a lookout, but little else. The room had a few other tricks to it, though it was common knowledge to our regulars. At any rate, they come to play poker in a room steeped in history. Despite the dark past, it was all good. Clean fun. It doesn't seem like clean fun if somebody died. Uh, play a game of poker using two decks of cards. Two decks of cards? A simple measure to prevent cheating. If you alternate two decks, no one can slip in cards. There's something else I noticed. In addition to the cards on the table, there are some lying scattered on the floor. Precisely. Cards on the table, cards upon the floor, each one forming a complete deck. A crime scene painted blue by a sad sweep of cards. It's poetic, really. Incidentally, we use two types of cards at the club. One deck of cards is red, the other blue. Hmm. As I recall, in poker you make five card hands. I can see how it would be easy to cheat. Heh. <laughs> yes, a game of hands. What does that mean? <laughs> This competition you're talking about. I believe the court understands the nature of the game sufficiently. Th that's right. It was a simple game after all. Are you sure? Huh? People are not murdered over simple games, Mr. Justice. Defendant, you were in the room the very moment that crime occurred. Yet you claim no connection to the crime? Now that's strange. What's strange? I was testifying about the competition that night. Asking me about the crime at this point is against the rules, Your Honor. Why? Of course, I expected to hear a cry of objection from the defense. Ha! <laughs> ha! 
I completely let that one slip by. Don't despair yet, Justice. Sir? Right. There's something I'd like uh, made clear. Namely, your connection to the case at hand. And I'd like to hear it from you. Sure. Why not? Very well. The defendant will amend his testimony. Just one little press, and I've got myself a whole new testimony. I plead silence regarding the murder, but I will never touch... Uh, but I will say I never touched the murder weapon. Didn't it have his prints on it? Silence. The defendant has the right to refuse the testimony. I haven't forgotten everything about the law. But why? That clearly puts you at a disadvantage. And it's your job to turn that around in our favor. Yes, just make it easy for us. We're, you're our, we're here to help you, Phoenix. <laughs> Great. Like I didn't have enough to do already. Justice, didn't you detect anything odd about that testimony? Huh? Wait, something he said did ring a little strangely. Just one thing. Now what was it? When you figure it out, I'd suggest presenting evidence. Evidence that contradicts the testimony. A contradiction in Mr. Wright's testimony, but why? I'd better check the court record. I can't imagine Mr. Wright lying in a testimony. Isn't it a little early to be jumping to conclusions? This is your first cross-examination. Take it slow. If you need more information, don't forget to press. That's right, I got it. I'm fine. Time to listen to that testimony again. Okay, so I am going to... Uh, press him. I read through that. That's all it is a game and our customers are happy. Uh, I'm going to present the bottle because it has his prints on it, so he clearly touched it. Ooh, I got something. <laughs> so you didn't, you say you didn't touch the murder weapon. This grape juice bottle, right? So I said. Something the matter, Mr. Justice? <laughs> He's so weird. Too bad our new defense attorney never learned how to play dumb. What's this, Mr. Payne? I examined the bottle in question, you see. And it was covered with the defendant's fingerprints. We are kind of throwing our own client under the bus. Objection! <laughs> no need to shout, Mr. Justice. I can hear you just fine. <laughs> Excess yelling can damage the judge's ears and our case. What about my cords of steel? <laughs> anyway, what's so strange about fingerprints on a bottle in a restaurant? Well, that's true. The prints alone don't prove he did it. Ooh. Oh, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. Huh? But the fingerprints on the murder weapon were upside down. Oh, like he was gripping it to... Gotcha. Upside down? What does that mean? It means he was holding the bottle inverted. And there can only be one reason for that. Whack. Yes. To brain someone with a bottle. Ah. M Mr. Gavin. I think things just took a turn for the worse. Oh? I see no problem, Justice. Huh? The only thing that matters is the truth. There's a good reason for everything. You'll see. Defendant, can you explain your fingerprints on this bottle to the court? I stand by my plea of well, You're making this harder on yourself, Phoenix. Just tell us what happened. For now. Hmm. Not very cooperative, are you? This could hurt your case. I'm sure he's uncooperative because he's hiding something. There must be some reason. Objection! Your Honor, you seem to have forgotten something. And what might that be, Mr. Gavin? On the night of the crime, who was it who reported the murder to the police? Reported? Well, that was the defendant, Mr. Wright. But still, that... Really? Uh, well, yes, according to the case file. The murder was reported from near the scene by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Near the scene? Let's take a look at a diagram of the murder scene, shall we? The victim was murdered in a small room in a basement two floors down from ground level. Of course, cell phones can't get reception so far down. The defendant used the stairs in this hallway to go above ground. The call came from the first floor of the restaurant. I see. And this is the phone that made the call? Looks like an old Nokia. Uh, right cell phone added to the court record. Let's, um... Is there something? Can we look at it? Used by the defendant? Can we look? Yeah. Anything we can push? Look at? Oh, what was this? Take this off. Why does it have a band-aid? Wow, the battery is being held in with a piece of tape. Oh, I see. <laughs> you should just buy a new one. Maybe he can't afford it. Or he just doesn't care. Uh, 
Da, da, da. I think that's it. Okay. The defendant could have just fled the scene of the crime if he chose. Yet, he fulfilled his duty as a citizen and reported it to the authorities. And you claim he is being uncooperative? Ugh. Nice save, Mr. Gavin. I'd better not waste this. I think the prosecution has toyed with our client enough for the time being. Toyed? I assure you no one is more serious about. What was it you said? The defendant was in the room the very moment the crime occurred. How can you possibly know this? That is a good question. How indeed? The answer is simple, Your Honor. The prosecution has a de decisive witness. Ooh, somebody else. <laughs> You're as good as they say you are. So someone else is in the room the night of the crime. There were three chairs in there. That must mean they witnessed the crime. Everything up till now has been a warm-up, Justice. Are you ready? Very well. The prosecution may call its first witness to the stand. It's always, it's always like the cute, innocent-looking girls in this game that do it. The witness will state her name and profession. Hold on just a moment. Where's the witness? <laughs> I surmise that she has been frightened by the defense's demonic-looking horn. <laughs> so I'll use a little hair gel. Relax, people. Have no fear. If any horns point in your direction, this court will cut them off. You, you, are you sure? I swear it on my gavel. Please, come out. Isn't violence, isn't violence against hair a crime, your honor? Well, if you're sure, it is okay. Now, the prosecution. Oh, well, wait, <laughs> I don't think you can take pictures in court. Would the prosecution care to explain the witness's uh, paraphernalia? Uh, yes, she is a professional... Professional... Wait, like she's a professional photographer? Uh, these are merely the tools of her trade. And that would be... My name is Olga Orly. Orly. I'm employed as waitress in a Worst Bowl Club restaurant. Then why the camera? Of course, it is my pride to serve borscht that is name, naming a restaurant. But I also perform, how's it said? Other service. I take it one of these other services is taking the customer's pictures? Yeah, da. Like, for example, this one. Okay, we, oh, that looks incriminating. Th that's the defendant? Indeed, on the night of the murder. Man in white hat is one who has gone kaput. Indeed. That is the victim. Uh-oh. Not looking good for Phoenix. Order, order. This is quite a piece of evidence to casually drop into our laps. It is the same way as I drop cold bowls of borscht on laps of customers. Casually. <laughs> that sounds awful. Not a very good waitress. Hmm. Then the court will casually accept this new evidence. Yeah, I feel like we should have had this from the beginning. Uh, let me... Hold on, hold on. Let's take a closer look at it. Is there anything in here... I see lots of great bottles there, okay. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> now witness, where were you at the time of the murder? I was in room. The hideout, we call it. Excuse me? The hideout? It is room where famous gangster bad guy was a <laughs> bad guy. That's funny. <laughs> was arrested. It is room where murder took place. What? Your look of utter surprise, it is lovely. I will post my courtroom door later for you. Da, da, photos will be numbered and you will write which ones you want copy of. She's trying to make money. So there were three people in the room at the time of the crime. The victim, Shadi Smith, Mr. Wright, and Olga Orly, Orly, I cannot say that name, our witness. And if Mr. Wright isn't the killer, that means... Did she do it? I'm telling you, it's always the cute, innocent looking girls in this game. Go, go watch Let's Plays of the other games. You'll see what I mean. Very well, witness. You will testify to the court about that night's events. Witness testimony. That fateful night. Well, we will learn about that fateful night in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And if you enjoyed your time, leave a like and say hi down in the comments below. And consider subscribing if you want to catch more of this series. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Ace Attorney, The Apollo Justice Trilogy.